What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to episode number two of our Liverpool FC Let's Play here in Football Manager 2020. Yes, we're back again. Of course, if you missed the first episode in this series, do go check it out today. Two huge games, no messing around. We're getting into the meat and the potatoes of the season. We've got the European Super Cup against Chelsea and we're following that up with a trip to Old Trafford. Yes, not the easiest two games for episode number two, especially off the back of the Manchester City game last time out. You can see here we have played just one game since you were last here. It was against Sheffield United. It was a very convincing 6-0 win. Let's have a look at the highlights, shall we? We started off in the first minute getting off to a flyer. Uh, Mane grabbed what was one of two goals in this game. Dybala involved in the build-up play. A little bit of scrappy, a little bit of good fortune, but not a bad way to start the first 20 or so seconds of the season. Salah then scored from the spot via... VAR did give a penalty. I know I probably should launch that as a bug and log it with SI. Of course, it's a beta. Uh, we then had Mane grab what I think for me was the goal of the game. A corner that wasn't really dealt with. It fell to him kindly. He smashed it into that top left corner. And in the second half, well, we scored another three goals. Firmino with the first. A header from quite far out, to be honest. Got a lot of power on it. Uh, and did well to divert it goalwards. The ball whipped in from that left-hand side. Dybala then grabbed a goal from the free kick, and what a free kick it was. It was beautiful. And then in the dying embers of the game, Shakiri getting in a goal. Joe Gomez, who was moved to right back with Alexander-Arnold, getting injured, um, whipping in the ball. And uh, yeah, a good little finish by the Swissman. So anyway, that's kind of the only game that you've missed. Obviously, a fantastic performance, but we can't get too carried away. It was against Sheffield United. Uh, in terms of team news going into the first of today's games, uh, Fabinho has theoretically won his race to get back to fitness, but I'm not going to chance him today in the European Super Cup. It feels unnecessary. Of course, Alisson is still out, as is Naby Keita. Um, worth noting, Alexander-Arnold, unfortunately, out for two to six days which is a bit of a shame. Uh, he got injured in that game against Sheffield United. I'm hoping he'll be back fit for the United game in just three or four days' time, but that is looking kind of unlikely. Um, obviously, this European Super Cup game is the first match to focus on today, and I'm hoping we can put in a good little performance. It's a bit of a kind of tricky start to the season, though, in truth. Of course, Manchester City to start in the Community Shield, I wasn't as bothered by. But the two games that are coming your way in this double header episode are huge. And the first team we're going to be taking on here is Frank Lampard's Chelsea. In terms of team news, Mane had a man of the match performance in the game at Sheffield United. So he's going to hold down that left midfield position. Of course, he wasn't available last episode for us. That does mean that Danny Olmo is waiting in on the bench. A really good versatile attacking option there. And um, yeah, we're going to stick with the system that we've started with. Of course, it looked okay against Manchester City. We created plenty of chances. I can actually select more players here because of the competition rules. Um, but um, no, we look very good against Manchester City in terms of creating chances. Defensively, we weren't particularly solid. Obviously, against Sheffield United, we saw that attacking potency come to fruition. We looked superb. Hoping for more of that here today as we go into this European Super Cup game. You can see they are playing a 4-2-3-1. Kante, for me, the player to watch out for. Uh, they've got Zuma and Rudiger playing alongside each other. Mason, Mount, William, Pedro and Giroud up front. Right, so let's see how we get on going into this game, shall we? Having missed out on silverware last time out, albeit a slightly tin pot cup, I want to win at least one of the tin pot competitions that we're in. I know the, the board aren't as bothered about this as I am, but ultimately... I want to get a win here. I want to get things off to a flyer. Of course, we are still without Allison, But besides him, we're very close to being at full strength here. Let's see what we can do. Andy Robertson, shot block, full to Salah. Wijnaldum, Kepper. Lovely little stop there at the near post. I will say, from my brief experience with FM20, goalkeepers do actually make quite a lot of saves. I feel like, in some ways, key highlights doesn't always do that justice. But, yeah, it's one of, been, one of the big notable things for me, as I've noticed... You just, it feels like goalkeepers stop more, and they don't. It's just the game shows it more, and the saves look more satisfying. And, well, Kepa made a big stop there. We're on the attack, though, and you, you don't stop that. That has shades of his goal last time out against Sheffield United. Sadio Mane, third goal of the season for him. It's after five minutes. It's the same minute as he scored his fantastic goal against Sheffield United. Look at this here. Hammers it home right into the top corner, in off the post. I'm not sure how he squeezed that in. Of course, we have got Mane playing out on the left-hand side in the new inverted winger role. 
I'm always very curious when a new role gets added to Football Manager to see how it works out. Of course, Inverted Winger was in the game last year, but only for kind of wide midfielders rather than attacking midfielders. So that's kind of the change there. And I, I feel like it's going to work quite nicely with him tucking inside and behind Dybala and equally just finding half spaces, which you can see him doing just here. Can he pull it across at the byline to Jordan Henderson? Should lay it across, doesn't need to lay it across. Henderson with his first goal of the season, 2-0 up. And we look very, very good here. We've edged out possession. We've had four times as many shots as them. And it's all come from the man out on the left-hand side again. Mane, lovely little run here. I feel like in past FMs, he probably would have shot into the side netting. He circles back on himself, waits for that light, late arrival into the box in Jordan Henderson, who tucks it away. I mean, I want a third. Dybala, the new signing, whipping in. Firmino wins his header, but can only divert it over the crossbar, unfortunately. We've started this game by far and away the better team. Matip on a booking is a teeny tiny bit concerning. I'm not going to pretend it's not. We'll keep an eye on that. Of course, Matip coming in to start today's game with Alexander-Arnold out injured. Joe Gomez finds himself at right back. Matip then drops in in uh, the centre-back positions. Um, a chance to prove himself, perhaps. Mane, again down this left-hand side, threads it through to Robertson, who this time blazes it over the crossbar. Not quite the composure we saw from Jordan Henderson there, I think is maybe the fairest way to describe things. Let's see what we can do this time. William lumps it clear. Virgil van Dijk at the back, going back to Adrian, who I'm trying to learn to trust. Of course, we're going to be without Alisson for a few months yet, so I need to get used to trusting the Spaniard in goal. But it does make me a little bit nervous when the ball goes back to him there. Pressing high up the pitch here. Forcing an error. Goes to Mane. What a finish that is. And that's kind of one of the things I want us to do here. You know, we are keeping a little bit of the Liverpool DNA in. In terms of when we don't have the ball team instructions. They are about, you know, pressing re relatively high. Trying to force errors out of the team. And that's what we've done here. You know, Joe Gomez leads the press. He loses the ball here. In some systems, he would drop back here. He presses forward. And you can see how our kind of striking setup, the four players up front, they're just in our line here, suffocating the back four. Now, if teams break that initial kind of suffocation, we might have problems in the midfield. But it, I feel like we're going to get errors forced like that one you saw there. We've been rampant in this game. We have got to be wary, though. It's only 3-0. Until it's 4-0, I won't believe it's over. And, well, it could be 4-0 here. Salah breaking forward. Still a lot to do, I will add. Throw to Denison to Dybala, who puts his shot just wide of the post. And narrowly, narrowly wide. But what is, not, what, narrow, what is not narrow is the difference between these two teams. You'll notice I've got a little yellow thing on my, my team here. I've got a note which I accidentally attached to the team. And in the beta, I can't remove notes. The delete note button doesn't work. So if you're wondering what the yellow square is, it's not your monitor. It's not broken or anything. I, I just accidentally made a note. I never use notes in Football Manager. What I actually have is a notepad that I scribble stuff down in like a weird person. I'm curious, if you're watching this, have you ever used the in-game notes? Do you use them on the regular? There's got to be someone out there who does. I want to find you, person. Let me know. I, I, I just like a notepad. I like the good old traditional Anyway, out of possession here, you can see how we are trying to press high, but we're really pressing them out of space. I'm loving this. Firmino wins it. When Alden gets it, Salah with space in behind. Should throw it through to Dybala, who's got to finish this and does finish it. Given the money we paid, if you'd missed that one, I would have been a little bit concerned. But he has banged it home. It's his third goal of the year in only three games. That's rather pleasing. Salah with the assist. We win the ball up high. I think that's Rudiger there, forced to press up. And then, well, we just catch them completely out of position. We overwhelm them. And, uh, well, the defenders were left between a rock and a hard place in terms of do they cover the man in the centre, do they close down Salah. In the end, they kind of did neither, and we benefited. And with an hour gone, I should probably look to make some subs here, maybe to protect some of our star players. This has been a good little performance. Unlike in real life... Oh, my word! Oh, my... What has he done? It's the best goal I'm probably going to see all year in FM. He scored from 60 yards out. Sorry, what? Sorry, what? What? He scored from the halfway line. Why is he shot from there? I'm lost. For, I'm not lost for words. I'm, I'm, I'm full of words. We've just seen a goal from the 
from 60 yards out. I didn't see a goal like that in the entirety of last year. Actually, no, that's a lie. I had one against me in Leon Live, which if you watch that series, you know the goal I'm talking about. It was against us. Um... I don't really know what to say about that. I'm a, I know I am lost for words. The initial shock has worn off, and now I'm just sat in a state of what the hell just happened. Either way, there's still a game going on, and there's still attacks to be developed here. Salah bringing the ball forward, cutting inside. As that inside forward, this time Kepper is alive to it, does stop it. I'm now trying to think of the clickbait title for this episode, but I don't actually title the episode, so I don't need to worry about it. What would it be? OMG, goal from halfway line. I have, like, the shocked emoji in the bottom corner. We don't do that here. <laughs> anyway, though, it's 5-0. We've been absolutely rampant. This is what I want to see. This is how I envisage this system working. Dybala pulling the strings, and us just causing teams a world of hurt. Is that goal line technology? Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Goal line technology is checking if the ball crossed the line when it was wide of the goal. It's a beta. Hashtag it's a beta. What is the weirdest thing you've seen in FM this year? So far in FM20. That, that might take the biscuit for me. Goal line technology checking <laughs> the ball going wide of the goal. It's a weird game, isn't it? It's a funny game. Either way, Pulisic here on the ball, of course, got a hat-trick recently for Chelsea in real life. Not quite lived up to that here against us. Now with Kovacic, Dinks, it's Asper Quetta. Lovely build-up play. Might be offside, but that move itself was really, really good. Is it going to be ruled out? It, I think it has been ruled out. VAR coming to the rescue for us here. I talked about making changes a while ago and then I never did it. Let's make some now. Mane's got his hat trick. He deserves a little rest. We'll bring in Danny Olmo. I'm going to bring in Henrich as well for Joe Gomez. Um, just because Joe's tired. He's on a booking. I'd like to give Henrichs a bit of football. You know, we brought him in for a pretty modest fee from Monaco to be a backup fullback option. Um, with Trent out injured, it's probably worth just giving him some game time and an opportunity here. Tammy Abraham, I was scared about playing against us. He didn't start this game. He's come on off the bench, and I'll be honest, he's not really had an impact, has he? Salah whips it in, Matip off the bar to make it six. Now with Virgil van Dijk, can he score? Matip hits it. Firmino hits the woodwork. I mean, we're, not, we're relentless. We're not stopping. We're not resting on our laurels. We're stomping all over them. We're trying to get another goal, and... It's not quite worked out, but we are going to get some silverware. The iconic work the space green and red suit is out in force. Hopefully not for the for the last time this year on a podium. But yes, what a little performance that was. 5-0. Just dominant, rampant display. Makes you wonder, what could have happened? What could have happened, you know, if we'd played that well and taken our chances against Manchester City? I'm sure we'll find out over the course of this season. Man, a man of the match performance. Absolutely superb. I feel like we need to re-watch that goal. Let's, let's re-watch it. I think it was the fourth goal of the game. It was... Was it the last goal? It was the last goal of the game. I mean, it was absolutely sensational. It could have been more. It probably should have been more. Let's just enjoy this. Pulisic gives away the ball. Mane wins it. And then... Okay then, mate. O okay then. Yeah, go on. Go on. I, I don't know what to say. <laughs> that was silly. Anyway, we've got Manchester City. Uh, Manchester, that's an awkward slip. Manchester United in three days' time. We're going to go forward to that. We're going to have a look at the Youth Development Centre stuff. Uh, and yeah, then we'll get into that game. Second game of the episode. I'm not sure if we can expect a performance quite as good as that last one. Um, but well, let's see how we get on, shall we? Okay, guys, so we're back. It's only been a few days, but we've got Manchester United today. I'm kind of excited and kind of nervous to get into it. I feel like the bar has been set so high now by the first two kind of games outside of that Manchester City game. It's going to be difficult to maintain. I thought we'd start in the development centre, but in truth, this is one of those features that in Football Manager really comes to life within a few months of a save game. Right now, as you can tell, it feels a little bare, but I do think it's worth just drawing attention to some of our best young players. We've got Harvey Elliott, who looks absolutely superb. I kind of want to set up his training myself. In terms of what, I think inside forward is actually probably a good approach. Although, I'd kind of like to improve his strength training, I think, a little bit. He's not, not the strongest of boys, so we'll work on that. 
We've got a few other players here as well. You can see some very, very good defenders. I guess the big one, actually, is probably Van der Berg. Um, obviously, a lot made of this guy when he signed for Liverpool recently. Not got the craziest potential, at least according to our assistants, but we'll keep an eye on him and hope he can develop nicely. Of course, we've also got a few players like Liam Miller and Woodburn out on loan. But yeah, maybe we'll come back to this when it's fleshed out a little bit more, because I feel like it's a little bit underwhelming right now. Um, of course, the other new feature in FM is the Club Vision stuff. I find myself self obsessively, you know, checking this stuff like the squad and kind of how things are going. So you can see here the board are really happy with the current kind of happiness. I find that I go to the match performance and I analyze this every single game. You know, I want to see like how are we doing? Are the board happy with stuff? Um, you can see even against Manchester City where we lost three one, they were at least happy with the way we were playing. And you can also see on tactics. Um, you know, general opinions here. It's really cool. Like this is not anything too revolutionary for a football manager, but at least. In its current form, and right now at the start of the FM20 beta, I'm kind of finding myself obsessively checking if I'm like ticking off the tick boxes that the board expect. But anyway, let's cast an eye forward to the game against Manchester United. Uh, Fabinho is actually going to be fit for today's game, so we're going to bring him in to play that defensive midfielder on support. Obviously, last game, Henderson played there, and you saw how he got forward and actually got that goal at the edge of the area. Um, you know, Traditionally, with this kind of system, you might expect one of our midfielders to really hold the fort, whereas actually... On the support duty, the defensive midfielder will get forward a little bit. Again, I've got to monitor that from a counter-attacking perspective, but at least for now, I kind of want to go in all-out attack and see you know, how we get on and learn, I guess, from our failings. I'm just wondering, wondering if there's any further changes I want to do, but I don't think there is. You look at Dybala, three goals in three games for him uh, on the side of Mane, five goals and two assists. Salah, only one goal and one assist. Maybe he can be the man to turn on the fireworks for us today. We are playing away from home against Manchester United, so it's not going to be easy. You can see, actually, looking at the earlier fixtures, Manchester City lost away from home against Tottenham. I feel like Manchester City, they're going to be our big rivals this year. So to see them slipping up like that, it fills me with a little bit of hope that maybe this can be our year. Maybe we're not going to need to get 100 points to win the Premier League. We'll have to see if that's actually how it plays out. Looking at their team here, you can see they've actually brought Jota in. Um, they've signed him and he got two goals in his first game of the season in the league. So, yeah, we've got to be a little bit wary of him. How much did they sign him for? They signed him for £45 million. That is not a small amount of money, is it? The rest of the United team you can see here. It's a pretty strong squad. We've got to be at our best, of course, Dybala, kind of that big new signing for us. Let's hope he can put in another good little performance. So far, he really has hit the ground running. I wasn't sure what his goal-scoring return was necessarily going to be like as an advanced playmaker on attack. But, well, if the early start to this year is anything to go by, he's going to get goals for us. And we'll hope that we can maintain the goal-scoring threat that we've possessed. Um, you know, away from home against United, though, we've got to expect them to come at us a little bit, I feel like, under Solskjaer, which is going to make things tricky. And, uh, yeah, we're going to have to be at our best here. Some would call it naive for me to start, you know, attacking, but one of our club coaches is playing entertaining football, playing attacking football. Um, the board, they don't want to see us come away from home like this and play defensively. But I am a little nervous here because on key highlights now, the kickoffs don't usually show, which means there could be a very early chance here because we've not stopped. I would not like to go a goal down after a minute. And we've nearly gone a goal down after a minute. Danny James with an effort from range there, whizzed over the bar. Kind of a warning shot in our direction. Also, Joe Gomez picking up a booking. That's not really a great way to start a game, is it, against your rivals five minutes in. You're right back getting a booking. He's going to have a tall order now to contain Rashford without picking up another booking. We'll hope that he can be at his best. Win the ball here through Salah. Kind of high up the pitch. We're going to break away here. An ambitious ball through. Doesn't make it, but Henderson playing box-to-box -box midfielder today. Wins the ball nicely. Now with Van Dijk, who switches the play. That pass to Gomez is superb. Nice play out the back here. Salah now cutting inside. Gomez on the overlap. Gets tackled and we could get caught a little bit in behind here. You could see Rashford prays it forward and Adrian has got... Um, apparently that was fingertips. That looked like a pretty hefty fingertip touch to me to get it over the crossbar. Noting how Rashford moved there as they hit the woodwork again. Oh my gosh, this is not the start to the game I want. Boys, please switch on. Um... But yeah, Rashford looks like he's going to stay forward. And with the way we have our fullbacks attack, you know, and go up the pitch, I have got to be a little bit wary that he might not track back Rashford, which might help us create an overlap on the right-hand side. But equally, it is going to mean that if they want to launch a counter-attack, Manchester United only need to really pump the ball down onto that left wing and we could be in all kinds of world of problems, especially with Gomez already being on a booking. 
Anyway, Fabinho, what a ball that is that he attempts. I appreciate the ambition to get the ball forward here. Henderson caught out with the ball again, and now with Rashford, again, getting in behind Gomez, hits it, hits the woodwork. Jack, why are you not changing your tactics? You've just discussed the fact that Gomez is not looking great. Let's change him to be on support. And I'm going to do the same with Robertson. I could debatably switch them to defend, but I do feel like with our system, it is important that they overlap just a little bit. Um, I could debate if we get rid of the team instruction for looks for overlap on the right, but we should now see Gomez hold his position a little bit more. Mane skips past his man, whips it into Bobby, cleared away, and it's one long ball down the middle. Diego Jota has another effort. Adrian has stopped it again. I mean, Adrian is currently the best player in the team. I don't know if goalkeeping average ratings and stuff have been fixed in FM20. I feel like last year it was kind of... They always just averaged between a 6.6 .6 and 6.9. He should be right now in contention for player of the match because he's made some saves to keep us in this game. We really haven't looked particularly good here so far. You can see they've torn us apart, but it's still nil-nil, and that's kind of the big crucial thing here. Firmino switches the ball to Robertson, who on support, as you can see, does still get forward. He crosses into Henderson, who takes it down, hits it, falls to Debalu, hits the woodwork with an open goal. I'm gouging out my own eyes. That's not what you want to see. Dybala should almost certainly be finishing that. You can see body language for them is um, kind of not looking particularly good. We've done our own little shout, got the players fired up here. Uh, I mean, they've had fewer chances since we've changed our fullback setup. But yeah, Van Dijk's not at the best of games. Looks like at half-time, barring a very late goal here, it's going to be nil-nil. Hold the phone, though. Hold the phone. There is 50 seconds left, and we're in their third. Although, that's not where you want to see the, the ball be given away. They dink the ball over. Van Dijk going to go back to Adrian. There's 40 seconds left. Could something magical happen? Matip launches it long. Shaw now in a straight race with Firmino, who, of course, is going to press him and try and force out an error. McTominay lays it back. Firmino beats his man, though. Gets there first. Dinks the keep. Oh, my gosh. De Gea, what a save that is. I absolutely love the audacity of Firmino there to try and chip De Gea. Unfortunately, it's not quite paid off on this occasion. Just going over the crossbar. And, well, half-time, nil-nil. It's been a good nil-nil, though, for the neutral. Going to tell the players I'm far from pleased. I want them fired up. I want them riled up. Um... See, I, I kind of, I was about to be like, let's bring in uh, Trent Alexander-Arnold or Joe Gomez. But of course, Gomez is on a booking. Trent's out injured. Debatably, could have had Henricks on the bench. I could still play Fabinho at right back. That's probably the move that I would look to do. I'm just a little bit scared of Gomez getting sent off. Although he's won the ball superbly there. And it's with Salah cutting inside. That is not the place to finish you expect from Mohamed Salah, is it? That is slightly woeful. I don't know if this highlight started before I went to make a tactical change. I'm going to assume it didn't, so we'll wait and see what happens here before we start you know, doing tactical changes that I might want to throw out the window. But what I'm thinking is we'll move Fabinho into right back for Gomez, who I'm really hoping isn't going to get sent off in this highlight now. Uh, and then we'll bring in Wijnaldum, I think, at centre mid and drop Henderson deeper. Right, let's do that now. Um, this is something that I don't want to have to do too often, but Fabinho can play fullback. He's pretty good at fullback as well. Um, and then we're just going to get in Wijnaldum and swap in with Henderson. Uh, prefer these guys this way around. I just think Wijnaldum's a little bit better going forward than Henderson. And Henderson is a bit better defensively. And I feel like you need a bit more intelligence to play that uh, defensive midfielder role. And I feel like that is something that whilst Wijnaldum doesn't lack, Henderson is just a very, very experienced player who's mature and going to do what we need him to do there. Anyway, this could be the last little bit of action for Joe Gomez for this game. Playing right back. He's not had a bad game, to be honest, but on a booking going against Rashford. Um, you know, he's managed his game well, considering that with five minutes gone, he was booked. Going forward here, dinks the ball in. Henderson, headers it. De Gea saves. It wasn't the most lethal of headers, was it? Let's be honest. Kind of an early change, but I feel like it's necessary. We whip the ball in. Firmino, back post, header. United dominated the opening of this game, but I feel like we've come into this now. Although I say this, but I'm going to jinx it, aren't I? Of course I am. Rashford, was he offside? We're going to consult VAR. I don't know why I'm holding my finger to my ear like I'm, I've got an earpiece in. I think the goal is it's ruled out. VAR to the rescue. I mean, it's tight, but he's offside. I thought I'd full-on cursed of the commentator there. 
talking about how we'd improved, how we were getting better, only then for them to score from a set piece immediately. But we live to fight another day. Henderson playing that deeper role now. What a ball that is to Fabinho, playing out on the right, whips it in. Mane can't quite get there. Falls to Robertson, though, who pass it into Dybala. Oh, my gosh. We are trying to get that pass through. We are kind of really sustaining pressure here. So many players committed forward. We are really overloading their back four here. Now with Mane. Can't quite find an option inside, and we could be caught out here. Jota bringing the ball forward. All on his lonesome. Switches the ball really intelligently, and Rashford's effort cannons off the post. It's been an action-packed game for a 1-1. There's been a real abundance of highlights. Right, I've got two changes left. I feel like it's time. We're going to bring in uh, Danny Olmo for Mane, who's not had a very good game. And you know what? I'm going to make the big decision. I'm going to take off Mane and Salah, and I'm going to bring in Shakiri and Olmo. Shakiri has a wand of a left foot, scored a goal against Sheffield United in our previous league game, and I think he can do a job for us. And Olmo out on the left, a young player, a bit of a point to prove. We've brought him in for in excess of £20 million. I expect him in these kind of games to be able to be a difference maker for us. We'll see whether or not that can be the case. Keep an eye on him out on that left-hand side. Ball attempted to be switched to Shakiri, came up short... Adrian should collect this. Should co He says nervously, anticipating some weird football manager shenanigans. Goes to Matip. Now wide with Fabinho, who has actually been quite involved in the play at right back, hasn't he? We've had a few highlights with him putting balls in. Shakiri here. Dinks the ball across to Olmo, who nods it down to Dybala. Have a go! Have a go! Oh my god, it's hit the woodwork. The keeper tipped it onto the post. Still with Ronaldo, who has an effort. Oh, that was an incredible opportunity there. What an effort by Dybala to be a difference maker in this game. There's five minutes left. I'm going to go more attacking. I can't actually do another shout. And nil-nil is what we've got to settle for. I mean, an, an entertaining nil-nil. I feel like I said it was 1-1 halfway through there. It felt like a game where there was goals. There wasn't any goals. I can't count. Adrian, man of the match. It did happen. Our goalkeeper put in a top draw performance, kept us in that game. And despite not scoring, I'm kind of happy with that because we weathered a storm early on and then we came back strong. And not many teams are going to go away from home to Manchester United and hold on like that. You can see here, um, he did absolutely incredible stuff. Six saves, an 8.1 rating, really good passing as well by Adrian. I mean, praise him. I don't recall ever praising a goalkeeper for a man of the match performance. We're going to do it there. Very, very happy with his contribution to that match. That is absolutely superb for us. And you can see, if only a couple of games played, there are lots of teams who have slipped up and dropped points. This could be a very interesting Premier League season. Um, thinking further ahead to when we'll be back next episode, I think we might do the first game of the Champions League group stage. We don't know what our group draw is going to be just yet. I know that does mean we miss out on the game against Arsenal, but we want to get into you know some of the spicy matches to come this season. I don't want to make this a 20-episode long season. Um, you know, I want to get a couple of seasons done over the course of the beta and uh, with that in mind, I feel like the Champions League, you know, where we're going to be trying to defend our crown, feels like an appropriate time to come back and do that, well, for episode number three. Anyway, guys, I do hope you've enjoyed this one. Two pretty epic matches. The goal by Mane against Chelsea. Definitely the pick out and standout goal for me. Let me know uh, how you're experiencing the FM20 so far. Uh, if you are enjoying the content, of course, do subscribe. Do drop a like on this video. It is super, super appreciated. And other than that, it is me, Jack. And I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.